continue. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about PowerShell. I'm pretty sure everyone has come across this the command form. This is where you can type commands and then you get the output of the commands. So both PowerShell and command form are shell. The shell is basically a command line interpreter. So you can type commands, you can type stuff, and then it will interpret the stuff, the whatever you've typed, it will output the result of the command. So you might be wondering why you want to use PowerShell instead of the command prompt, since you're more familiar with command prompt and all. Well, for starters, uh, PowerShell actually makes it easier if you wanted to create a more complex script. Basic scripting is okay with command lines, but once you go into a, once you have nested loops, if and functions, it gets really tricky with command prompt. So without, uh, there's another reason as well, but without going too deep into the technical details, PowerShell passes objects instead of pipes. So instead of stupid dumb strings, you actually get an object where you can manipulate the object. And then there's also, um, PowerShell also has more commands compared to command prompt. Uh, they call this command commandlets, but it's built into PowerShell itself. So uh, compared to command prompt, you won't be needing more external dependency, more external software and stuff. So there's a few basic commands that I recommend you to learn first. Uh, the first one is the aptly named git command. So for example, you know part of a simple command. Uh, let's say you you know there's a command that has the word hash in it. So you type the command git command uh, star hash star. The star is actually a is a um, is a word card character. So because I do not know where the word hash is located inside the command, so it's covered both sides. It's covered with the word card. And then when we run it, we get a list of everything of the commands with the word hash in it. So here we get three. The one that we're interested in is git file hash. So another really interesting command is git help. It's very useful. Uh, you're probably going to use it a lot. And then let's say you wanted to know what the command git file hash does. So you just run git help, git file hash, and then it will just output the help regarding git file hash. So when you do a checksum of a file, you get the hash of the file which you can use to compare with the original data. The reason is the checksum or the hash is actually unique for each file. When you run, when you do a checksum on the file, you read the whole content and then you use a specific algorithm to calculate the hash. It, it creates a shorter string that is unique for each file. So you don't exactly you don't actually have a, for example, a one gig ISO, you would actually have a one gig string. So it's a shorter string that you can use to identify. So one of the reason you want to verify is to know that the file is downloaded correctly. For example, you downloaded an ISO, a really big ISO, and then your internet is not stable. But you want to know that, have you downloaded the file correctly? So usually that site would provide you with the hash of the, of the, of the ISO you just downloaded. So you just check the hash of the file you downloaded, and then you compare it with the hash at the site you downloaded. So if it matches, then you know that it matches exactly, it's the same file bit by bit. So we'll do some examples. I've downloaded an ISO from the internet. It's a clonezilla ISO, but I've renamed it to 123.iso. The reason I rename it is to show that the hash doesn't change when you change the file. So the hash only changes when you change the actual content of the file. So I run git file hash followed by the name of the file. Um, depending on the file size, it might take a while, so it's going to read the whole thing. So just give it a little time. So I just copy the hash and Google it, since I know the hash will be available publicly. 
since the ISO is available publicly as well. I open the first mirror and see that it matches and it even shows the original file name. Now let's just say we google some random hash and as expected we will get no result. Uh, if a hash is a private file, then you won't find anything that matches it online unless someone has the same exact file and decides to post and decide to post the hash online. So the odds of getting a of getting the same hash for a different file is almost impossible. This is actually because of the algorithm use. The math function makes sure that the odds of getting the same one is less than one in a trillion tries. Okay, I'm at my turn limit now, so I'm going to have to cut this short. So you're not only limited to ISOs, you can do this to pretty much any files, mp3, videos, tags, anything, as long as it's a file. And then it can also be downloaded from the internet, copied from pen drive, CDs, email, it doesn't matter as well. So what this allows is it also gives you reason to transfer important stuff that you don't want to be tampered with. So this could be a software installer or a sensitive script that requires admin elevation. So you don't trust the network or you don't trust the PC the file was copied from. So you're just trying to check some of the file and then make sure it's the same as the original file. So you know it's an original copy, it was not disturbed or edited in any way. So that's all from me, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to point out any errors or mistakes. I'm always open to suggestions. Eden out.